the Model Context Protocol or MCP. What is it? How does it work? And what opportunities does this bring? In this video, I will answer these exact questions to help you better understand what the Model Context Protocol means for building AI agents in the simplest way possible. If you are like me, you may have been overwhelmed by the Model Context Protocol name and may have found it hard to understand what it actually does. I will also address some of the limitations of the MCP and why you might want to be a bit cautious before diving too deep into it. My name is Brendan and I've been creating AI agents for small to medium-sized businesses for almost two years at my agency, Inflate AI. We've been building chat and voice agents using various development methods, and I've learned a lot about the best practices for these systems. So what actually is the Model Context Protocol? On November 26th, 2024, Anthropic, the company behind the Claude series of AI models, released an article introducing the Model Context Protocol. Anthropic states the MCP provides a universal, open standard for connecting AI systems with data sources, replacing fragmented integrations with a single protocol. The result is a simpler, more reliable way to give AI systems access to the data they need. So to make that easier to understand very briefly, it allows us to more easily connect our AI agents and large language models to access API information. If you've ever built an AI agent or any AI system and connected it to an API to access information, you'd know that the AI itself has no context as to how that function is being called. An MCP is designed to give the AI a complete understanding and control over that API request, making it far smarter and more enabled to make decisions on its own. Rather than giving it one API to book an appointment, you can give it to the MCP for Google Calendar, and now it has complete control over making any requests into Google Calendar by itself. So to translate this into an even easier to understand manner, I'm going to jump into a diagram I created. So this right here is a diagram that I've gone ahead and created that's going to walk you through everything to do with the MCP, what it is, why it's so popular more recently, and what it's sort of replacing, where in the sort of agent construction process is this going to be coming into play, why is it so important, and what does this mean for you. So I've got to jump into the start of this diagram here, and if you want to get access to this diagram, I'm going to link it a blow within my school community, which you can sign up for. We've got a lot of enthusiasts around AI agents and development and everything about this stuff. So if you ever have any questions, you can drop it in the school community as well. Otherwise, I am going to link this diagram in there. So to really start from scratch, I'm going to start at the large language models, so our LLM. So this is where we're able to generate our responses. You'll know this from ChatGPT. You'll know this from GPT-4.0, the models. These are going to be generating responses for us. And in itself, it's sort of useless as an agent per se something that goes ahead and does something for us and has access to tools and applications, it can't do anything, right? We're just talking to it. So we're going to be using ChatGPT. It doesn't have access to talk to our email system, doesn't have access to book appointments. It doesn't have access to, to do anything really beyond the conversational experience. And so this is, this is where tools and functions came in. And so you'll see here, number two, large language models plus tools and functions. So we've realized that the LLMs, they're not useful. We can't use them for agentic capabilities and running automations and workflows with them. And so now we've introduced tools and functions. And with tools and functions, well, what essentially all we're doing is giving it access to an app. So we're going to be doing this through what's called an API. So if we want to go ahead and book an appointment, we want to ask the AI to book an appointment for, for tomorrow, whatever reason. In order to do that, what we need to have is a, a function. So we need to have a, a tool that is called based on that request. If somebody says, I want to book an appointment. We've now set up a, a secondary bit of code that essentially listens for that. Somebody has now asked to book an appointment. Okay, let's trigger this. This is what's going to be triggered right here. And then we're going to have an API to go ahead and book an appointment. And this is very similar if you've watched any of my previous videos where I've built a lot of voice agents and chat agents, something like a platform like Vappy has tools and functions built into it. So you can see down here, we've got a booking function that I created previously, which connects to an external platform like Mac.com. Very simply, all it's doing is sending a request straight to a Mac.com webhook. It's then going to go ahead and send some information from our agent to go ahead and directly respond to a single API request. And that's all that that's doing. Very simple. We're saying we want to book an appointment. Okay, let's go to the endpoint for that and let's do it. Uh, we can get multiple APIs to this as well, of course. We can have uh, multiple tools and function calls, although this is all done very manually. So we essentially have to set everything up ourselves. It's very manual. Obviously, this right here is a very simple demonstration of connecting to APIs. Although as we start to get more complex, we can obviously do the same thing on other platforms. ChatGPT's GPTs, same thing. You build out a schema, do send 
a request to an application, if we start to build this out to be more complex, if we want to book an appointment, but not only book an appointment, but check availability. Well, checking availability is gonna be a, a secondary API call. So we're gonna have to have our prompt structure to, to schedule the appointment, and then we're gonna have to build an automation to do that, but they're gonna to have to have an API set up to, to book an appointment. And we're doing all this manually. We're handling all of the conversions of uh, API information from any type of service, Gmail, Zoho, Cal.com, all of these platforms. We're looking at their documentation and we're thinking about how do we communicate with this with our uh, large language model. Now where the MCP comes in, number three, large language model plus MCP. What's happening is that we're now gonna be communicating to sort of a middleman, a middleman translator between the large language model that doesn't really know how the APIs are working. And now we're gonna be connecting into an MCP, which is actually gonna tell our large language model exactly how the APIs are working and exactly how to make them, how to control every aspect of the API. And so what I mean by that is that at the moment when the large language model sends requests off to book an appointment, all it's doing is say, trigger this automation and it just does it. It doesn't think about how to do it. It doesn't think about uh, you know anything to do with the request content. That's all done manually through systems that we have to set up. But now the MCP is actually translating this for us. So I've added in a little, an image here of, uh, of a teacher, which is the API. It's got all this information that it's sending out. And then let's just think as the, the MCP as a translator. So he is like a, a sign language translator. And this sign language translator is talking to us, which is the large language model. We can't understand what the API is saying, but the MCP can actually communicate that to us. And so the really big benefit of this is that now the large language model only has one person it needs to talk to, and that's going to be an MCP. The MCP is going to handle all of the API information for an entire platform, an entire or automation workflow, and it can do any Thing it needs to. So instead of building out three different API requests to book an appointment, find availability in the calendar, reschedule, set up another API to cancel, set that all up and do the authentication for that and do it all manually and then tell the AI when to do everything. All we need to do is get access to an MCP for Cal.com or an MCP for Google Calendar. And this MCP is going to have access to every single endpoint or at least the endpoints that you want to have access to. And it's going to communicate that to the large language model to, to use. So we can have a Google Calendar MCP MCP that is going to talk with our large language model and we can just tell the large language model I'd like to book an appointment it's going to go ahead and do that we want to cancel the appointment it's going to go ahead and do that we don't have to set up any of that it's going to do it for us so scrolling down a little bit here I found an Expedia Hotels uh, MCP that's already been created just by googling it and you can see here there is all the different types of request types so they've got Python JavaScript HTTP and now MCP at the end here and so this is pretty much where you're going to find the connections for the MCP and so you're going to be able to send information off to the MCP and pretty much this MCP server is going to handle everything for us. So we want to book an appointment or we want to, sorry, book a hotel. It's going to then retrieve some information back to us and firstly tell us, okay, what are the endpoints required to actually do that? What are some of the other steps that we might want to do first? What are the other things that we have access to? That's going to get sent to the large language model to, to understand and process. It's then going to obviously enable the large language model to push a request to, to find some hotels, to then book the hotels, get pricing information, weather information, etc. So I scroll down here a bit. This diagram will help explain that a little better. So the large language model, we might give it a question. I'd like to book a trip to Monaco. What would the cost be? And when would be the best time to go? So a traditional system to structure this entire request would essentially be taking a large or taking a prompt that we've given the system. We're still going to need a prompt here, but it's not going to be as specific as to when APIs are called. So pretty much instead of creating four different functions and giving that to the AI and saying we have a, a get prices API or a get prices tool and we've got a find trips tool and we've got a book a trip tool and we've got a get weather tool. Previously, what we'd have to do is, is add all of these individual tools, connect them to the large language model and we'd have to write up a big prompt that says, if somebody has a, a travel request, need to figure out which of these tools are required to complete that request. And so that's fine and that's great to do that, although we have to create individual functions for every pathway that could occur. And that's assuming that you know exactly what they want. So in this case, I've done book a trip, find trips, get prices, get weather, although potentially there was another one which might have been a get availability for the times of these trips. And if we haven't added that as a tool or a function, we're not going to have that really complete agentic capability because it's not included and we can't get access to that info if it's not available to be retrieved. What Expedia could do is add every single one of their endpoints into their MCP server and that if any time we ever need any of that information to be retrieved, we can get it and we can get it quite intelligently because our 
our AI, our large language model, has complete context as to all of the different APIs that it can get access to, and it's just going to use them when it needs to. And so, once again, if I'd like to book a trip to Monaco and ask the, you know, what would the cost be, when would it be the best time to go, it's now going to think about that and logic uh, reason to itself. Well, we need to get the weather first because they want to know what the best time to go is. Then we need to find the trips that are within that weather. Then we need to get the cost for it because they also want to know what the cost would be. So we have to run three individual API requests, and then it's going to retrieve that information and then send it back to the large language model to obviously talk to the user with. Uh, and so this is a really big deal because previously, if we didn't include get weather as an API request, we didn't think about it. Uh, we didn't think any user would, would be needing that. Essentially, it wouldn't obviously get the weather in the first place because it wouldn't have access to it. And so it's really, really streamlining and making the process of building these agents far better. So now I'm going to jump into what this actually means for a lot of the automation and workflow platforms that are currently out there like Mac.com, Zapier, and at end. How does this all fit into the ecosystem that we're currently using? So at the moment, pretty much what we're doing is taking a, a large language model, our agents, whatever, we're, we're communicating directly between it and we're talking to a Mac.com automation. We're triggering an automation to, to do something for us, to retrieve information, send information, a very static workflow. And in order to communicate to any application, we have to program it to do so. We have to set up all of the conditioning for it to get access to that information. And so when we start to think about a, a real agentic AI, a real like Jarvis-like intelligence to be able to access all these different bits of information that we request. Pretty much in order to build an agent that has that capability of and that flexibility to access that wide variety of information, we sort of need an MCP to communicate exactly every single application we can access so that it's just really intelligent and it can do that in an efficient manner. And so one of the opportunities that's probably going to be opening up in the future is going to be an MCP for Make, Zapier, and Eden. I could imagine them releasing their own version of it that you can get access to and pretty much communicate to any application based on a single request to do so. And so that's really powerful. That's incredibly powerful as to building out a really capable AI that is going to be able to trigger based on anything. So with make.com, they've got thousands of different integrations and connections. And pretty much if they build their own MCP in the future, we're going to be able to communicate with any application just based on requesting to do so. Now, that's obviously going to have some challenges in terms of authentication. If you were going to set that up, you would still need to have accounts on all these platforms and APIs and all these platforms set that up beforehand. So potentially it's still going to be difficult to just communicate with any application that you want right out the gate. But if you have them set up and maybe you set up a couple hundred integrations and get your API set up with Make and then Make comes out with their own MCP to communicate with, that's going to be pretty powerful. So what does this actually mean? How is this going to actually impact you? Is this something that you should even be doing? So some of the pros of the MCP right out the gate, just from understanding it, is going to be faster agent creation. So when we're creating these agents, if you've seen any of my my previous video building out agents or you built agents yourself pretty much building agents or at least building automations and workflows and APIs and connecting them to agents. It's a really big process. It's one of the more complex, it's one of the more tedious processes of actually building these agents, having to build workflows and then communicate to different APIs based on sets of conditions to do so. It gets quite complex in terms of prompting and setting up conditions of when and when not to do something. And if we've got an MCP to handle all of that for us, we're gonna be able to communicate with all these applications much more seamlessly. One most notably would be appointment booking. So there's many different API endpoints that need to be reached to effectively manage and schedule appointment handling over a conversational AI system. So we need to cancel appointments, we need to reschedule them, we need to offer availability, we need to book them in. And so just based on that, we've got four different API endpoints and an MCP is gonna come in and streamline that. We're not gonna have four different things to communicate with. We're gonna have one MCP server to communicate with. It's gonna handle everything for us. And the AI agent itself is gonna have complete context as to what it needs to run and when it needs to run it to, to get that end objective achieved. Another pro will be smarter agents with more control. So like I said, achieving that sort of Jarvis-like intelligence that we've seen in all the movies in, in order to actually get that level of complexity, in order to get that level of intelligence, it needs to have access to a lot of different things. And so when you start to think about a large language model, it's got context uh, for years and years of context. We can ask questions about anything, we can get answers about anything, and it's got a, a really good depth of ability. But when it comes to functions and actually doing anything, it is completely limited uh, as to our own manual process in implementing all of these tools. So if we are able to get a Z APR MCP that gives a single agent access to 5,000 different applications at all at once based on single requests. That's going to be a very smart agent with a lot of control that we're going to 
be able to build. The next would be a better user experience for the user. So if you're talking with a conversational agent, an MCP is just gonna streamline the entire process for that. It's not having to talk to of one API after the other. It's able to have a lot of knowledge as to what it needs to do. And ideally from this, we're gonna have a better user experience. It should also be more scalable to manage. So we're not obviously going through and adding in 400 different API calls for different situations and scenarios to communicate information and retrieve information. We've got one situation that is that's programmed on an MCP server to tell us exactly what we need to talk to. And it's able to do that very scalably. So we can give it one endpoint to talk to and say, this is your information hub. This is where you're gonna get everything from. And that's all that's gonna to have to be. But most importantly, I do really wanna highlight some of the cons of this as well. So there are definitely some downsides out of the gate. This is definitely not a finished thing. It's been around for about four months now since Anthropic released their paper on this. Uh, pretty much there's a higher potential for errors. So when we start to look at adding in API endpoints for potential APIs that we aren't even using, that it opens up the potential for error. So once again, let's say the appointment booking example, if we want to cancel appointments, reschedule them, book them, that's all we want to do, then it opens up the potential for an endpoint that modifies the title of an appointment. If that's an endpoint for an API, updates it and stuff. If we don't want to be using that endpoint, potentially the AI can get confused as to thinking that that's what it did want to do. And instead of rescheduling an appointment, it just changes the name to something else. And so that would be an example of an error that an MCP system could potentially face. And this leads on to the next part of the cons, which is highly prompt reliant. So these errors and all these processes is gonna be very prompt reliant. So no longer are we setting up a, a very strict condition to run one singular API. We're relying on our prompt to have the context as to what functions it should actually run in the first place. And so that means we're now very, very reliant on our prompt and our prompt engineering as to exactly what it should do, when it should do it, how it should do it, what exact APIs it should be even using in the first place. And so we're going to be very, very prompt reliant. This may also introduce higher latency with greater connections. So if we're going to be having 30 different API endpoints connected to an MCP server, that's a lot of information that the that the AR model is going to have to process, understand, and look through to understand, okay, exactly what API should I be using here? Should we use this one, this one? Is that going to work in the flow? This could take minutes to process. And that's going to be very, very different to a flow that we've gone out and structurally built our entire selves. And now finally, one of the most important things that I think you should really, really understand is that the MCP may not be the universal language for AI communicating with data. So like I showcased at the start of the video, the MCP is created by Anthropic. So this is a, a context protocol that Anthropic created. They decided that this is a, a structure that, that's been working for them and that other people that have open sourced it for other people to use. But this is by no means uh, anything that's finalized. Open AI could come out with their own protocol. Anybody could come out with their own protocol and pretty much overnight, everybody could swap over to this new protocol and that would completely mess up the you know, entire interface for communicating and connecting to these applications. And so if you are looking to, to build a system on an MCP specifically, or you're looking to build any applications, SaaS applications, anything like that, doing it through an MCP might not be the best way to go about right now. Maybe if OpenAI releases one, that one's gonna be getting more adoption. Maybe it won't get more adoption. Maybe they'll use the MCP. There's a lot of unknowns at the moment. And that's the only reason it's a con. I hope that was a helpful video in understanding how the model context protocol works and how this actually is gonna be connecting into these agent workflows that we're all currently working with. Once again, if you did wanna get access to this diagram right here, I'm gonna link it within my school community, which you can join in the description.